This is a brief video tutorial on looking at some test data, uh, trying to analyze it and come up with some design values. So um, in our lab, a series of unconfined compression tests uh, were carried out um, and the UCS is an abbreviation for that test and the test value we use is sigma C. They were conducted on a bunch of cores of Wallace sandstone, which is a really nice uh, local Nova Scotia sandstone. And uh, the tests were conducted on core of approximately 50 millimeter diameter, which is standard for the UCS test. And so here's our data here. Um, the test ID, uh, the UCS value, or the peak value in the test, which actually is really equivalent to sigma C. A little description of what type of failure occurred, which gives us some clue as to how the test worked out. Um, and then a few comments about the test. <clears throat> and so we're asked to create a histogram, uh, make some comments on the data and make any adjustments to the data that we, we think is are valid. Um, and, and ultimately uh, to do some statistics and then to provide a recommended design value for sigma C or for the unconfined compressive strength. Okay, so um, <clears throat> to do this, uh, you know, Excel is good or MATLAB or, or anything like that is, is fine. Okay, so you start off by entering the, the data into a computer Okay, and doing some, some basic statistical analysis. Okay, so um, we did that very quickly. Okay, entered the data into the computer and, and did some analysis. And, and this is the uh, sort of summary of some of the main statistics. And down here we have a histogram. And with histograms, <clears throat> you have to play around a little bit to figure out what are the appropriate number of bins and the bin spacing to uh, sort of be uh, revealing about the, the data that you have. And uh, I don't believe there's really any hard and fast rules about how many bins. Um, but, uh, you know, this is sort of a small number here. Um, but that's, uh, it really did uh, serve the purpose in this case. So for starters, let's, let's just look at the statistics. Okay, we have a minimum value of 23.5, a maximum of 106, a mean of about 79, median of 83, and a standard deviation of about 23. And these are all in MPA, okay? All the ones that have units anyway. Okay, so what do we see there? Well, you know, clearly... Um, the mean is much closer to the maximum than the minimum. Much, much closer. So it is really skewed to the left. And the histogram really does show that. That there is, you know, a sort of normal-like distribution over here, but there's something going on in the very low end. Uh, and, 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 and what is that? Okay. So... Um, Again, we can go back to our table of, of the data and we can look at these low values. Okay, so we have uh, one of them is a 27.2. Okay, and we get this 123 value, 54, 98, you know, they're all pretty reasonable. Okay, so we have two very low values. Now, statistically, if you, if you feel that it, there's some outliers in your data, usually the rule is that uh, three times the standard deviation from the mean uh, is considered a statistical outlier. Um, and that's grounds to remove data um, from your data set. <clears throat> now, in this case, um, these low values are not quite... Um, that far removed from the uh, from the mean to to justify it on that basis, 
But if we look at some of the comments here, okay, we have shear failure and we have splitting failure. These two very low ones say structural failure and a fracture was observed in the original specimen. And we see that for both of them and we don't see that for anything else. So really, what does that mean? Well, it means that uh, the specimens had some kind of weak plane in it before the test occurred. And then after they were broken, right, that the failure occurred on that, okay? And so is that a valid measure of the strength of the intact rock? No, it's not, okay? And so we can reject those two values as not representative of the unconfined compressive strength of the specimens. Okay, and then we can remove those from our data set. So I did that. I removed those two points and I recalculated the statistics. Uh, and you can see now I got some, some new values here. I got uh, 54 as a minimum, 106 as a maximum. Okay. We have still, the mean is, is now 84, right? Which is about 5% higher than it was. Let's show you both of these together. So we had 78 for the mean before, okay? And now we have uh, basically 84, which is a substantial increase when it comes to design. You know, the UCS is an important input parameter. The standard deviation has also changed substantially. It's a much tighter distribution of the data. But interestingly, the median is not that different. So the median really did do a good job of representing the center of the data, uh, even when there was an outlier present. Um, so that was, that was uh, pretty good. And now it's very close to the mean. So our, our, our measure of the center of the data is, is pretty good. And now we look at the histogram here that was revised. Again, I only used a few bins. Probably I should have used maybe twice as many. <clears throat> but you can see it produced a fairly normal distribution of the data. It looks, it looks very much like a normal bell-shaped distribution. Okay. So that looks uh, looks pretty good. And so I think we can use this <coughs> revised data uh, to determine our design value um, for the unconfined compressive strength. Okay, so we will select a design sigma C um, of the mean value, okay? So um, it could be 83.9, but you know, it's 0.95. We'll round off to 84 MPA. Okay, so that is our design value for the UCS. Thank you. So that's just a brief look at uh, some statistical analysis of the unconfined compressive strength. Uh, the unconfined compressive strength, as you know, is a very critical input parameter in rock engineering design. Uh, it's important for slope stability. It's important for uh, design of pillars. It's important for uh, tunneling and ground support design. Um, it's a major input to the hook brown failure envelope for a jointed rock mass. Um, so really uh, selecting an appropriate value is, is very critical. Now, in this case, we removed a few data points from our data set. And although we sort of did that rather quickly because it was you know, simply laid out in the, uh, in the question what to do, um, I wanted to emphasize to you that removing data um, that was measured in the laboratory or in the field is not something to do lightly. Um, you really want to make sure that it is warranted and there is a strong rationale. Um, there are many examples um, 
where unfortunately data was removed <laughs> inappropriately, uh, leading to incorrect design values and obviously incorrect designs and construction. Um, so it is not something to be done lightly, but only with, with careful consideration and um, with a really strong rationale.